Joey, the question of the day, is there a limit to how bad I beat you in golf the other day? See, I knew, I knew before we hit record, you were, you were not going to let me live it down <laughs> that here you were taking me out to play golf. Like, like you're doing me a favor. Cause this is my game. Like I like to play golf. You could care less. I could care less. And you literally demolished me on the back nine. Like we were tied through nine. We were tied in a terrible way. In a really bad way. Yeah. I, I think I gained seven strokes on you in the last three holes on the front nine to tie you. That's how bad yeah. I started. Yeah. It, but regardless, that, that has nothing to do with okay. today's podcast. Okay, so, I will not take this abuse. Okay. All right. So let's change the question. Is there a limit to how many times you can top the ball off the first two? <laughs> how big can I create my infinite banking system? And I think what we took away from this is there's several different ways to look at this question, right? Is it only a financial matter, right? How much my financial capacity is, or is it also from an insurance capacity? Like this is based off of a whole life insurance system of policies. So how much will an insurance company actually give me? That's another consideration. And then I think my favorite was creativity. Right? Am I the thing that is standing in the way of making this system as big as it could be? What, yeah. was, what was your biggest takeaway? Well, I, I know that creativity has to be your thing because you had yourself in some really creative places on the golf course <laughs> and you were trying to figure how am I going to hit it underneath this limb but around these three trees? Hey, you were in some pretty awesome spots yourself. Like, yeah. It was around Easter, and I felt like we were in an adult Easter egg hunt looking for your ball several times. Yeah. Good good thing that we both have insurance on ourselves because there was a few times we were, like, testing the the snakes. <laughs> <laughs> they were just sitting there. Whether or not they wanted to bite us or not, that was up to them. But we were definitely amongst them. That's right. That has nothing to do with today's podcast, nor does any of our intros ever. I just wanted to make sure I threw enough jabs in it, Joey. We're bad at golf. We're decent uh, at understanding infinite banking today, we thankfully our coaches give you more uh, full comprehensive look of how this works. And if you've ever had that question of is there a, is there a limit today, we're going to cover it. Let's jump in, pull up to the table, and belly up. Welcome to the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast, your guide to understanding how to get out of the Wall Street rat race and start your own mailbox money lifestyle. Now, don't let these handsome Southern draws fool you. These financial minds are teaching our country to enhance savings, increase cash flow, and create passive income, all without the help of Wall Street. Are you ready to break through? Now here are your hosts, Russ Morgan and Joey Murray. Welcome into the Financial Freedom Roundtable, where each week we break down complex financial topics so that you can more easily understand them and more importantly, take action on your path to becoming financially free. If this is your first time in the room with us, welcome. Grateful to have you. My name is Russ Morgan. I am the idea guy. Well, mostly because lack of faulty guy was that it's cool to me. But enough about me for a second. Let me introduce you to my co-host, the Italian stallion. He's got the license plate cover to prove it. Mr. Joe Mure. Stallion, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you, Russ, the idea guy. Man, I'm I'm hoping you got tons of ideas for us today. Well, I, my idea this week was to put the idea guy after my name. It was kind of like a, a surname to my surname. Like a double surname. <laughs> I love that. That's a great idea, Russ. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Idea. Stallion. <laughs> I guess this is the kind of day it's going to be. There's going to be no limits to the amount of jokes that are going to come out of you guys. But what I really want to know, is there a limit on how big I can make my IBC system? I think that's a great topic. In fact, we should name a whole podcast after that and talk about it. But we shouldn't talk about it alone, Russ, because to be honest, I don't want to hear from you anymore. I want to hear from the coaches. These okay. guys are the ones that are, are fielding these calls and these questions every day and helping people get to financial freedom. And this is the, the question that they're asking these coaches. So why don't we get to them? Uh, okay, you're done with me. Moving on. Moving on. To, to my left, the man I like to refer to as Mr. Incredible because his superpower is speed to find his own freedom. And the real beauty to that speed is it's contagious. My man, J.D. Hill. Say hello to your fans, J.D. 
Hey fans, you know what else is contagious? What's that? This haircut that I have. That's also contagious. Um, I, I don't understand. Do you, do, you, do you have like little bugs in there? I mean, there's a way to fix that. Mm. Look at all that. Look at those locks back there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Goldie locks. Exact, I, yeah. Well, I'm actually at that place now. My wife told me, she's like, okay, you got to get a cut now. Um, so it's it, no mullet. Uh, we're actually going to get a cut. Uh, when? I don't know. But uh, she, she has recommended that I get it cut now. So there is a limit to how long Diddy's hair can be. <laughs> a million percent. That's right. That's right. But is there a limit on how big I can make my IBC system? Uh, possibly. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll put it that way. I'll say, I'll say possibly. Possibly. That's not what you said before we press record. You told me, you know what the deal is with limits, don't you? Well, I, well, right. What I said is, you know what they say about limits is that our only limitations are those that exist within our mind. Um, yeah. And so is, is if you're, if you have a uh, limited thinking, then yeah, of course, there's a limitation on how much you can put into your policy. But mm-hmm. if you don't have limited thinking, then the answer is no. Yeah. Well, and then, and then our partner across the way here, the man I like to refer to as the true financial Sherlock Holmes of our day, no problem, too difficult to solve. If I would only have known him earlier, I would have been so much richer. Said everybody, Mr. Downtown Ernie Brown, nice to see you, Ern. It is nice to be here. Great now, what were you telling me Alec, Alec Baldwin was saying about thinking and something? No, that was JD. That was that wasn't me. I, I hadn't seen the movie either. <laughs> to be honest, I was trying to figure out who Alec Baldwin is. <laughs> so there's a limit to the amount of movies that you've seen by Alec Baldwin. Is what you're saying? Yes, there is. I was thinking of, I think he was in the movie It's Complicated. It's an older, <laughs> older rom com, older person rom com, I think. Rom com. It's a drama. Hey, Russ, a Russ takes offense to that whole older comment. Okay. <laughs> no, I was hey. talking about older. It's a it's an older couple. That's what ah, I mean. Not that okay. It's, okay. it's complicated. Well, it, is there that's... a Ern, is there a limit to how big I can make my IBC system though? You know that actually there is. That's unpopular, unpopular take, but I, I found the limit. I was limited on my when I started the system. Mm. Okay. But to be honest, I wish I could have JD's answer. That's the best answer. There's no, there's no limit on how many times I can bring up this in an awkward way, but I will try. I will try it again, but not until we've talked to the retiree of our group. Speaking of older, Mr. Catch me if you can, when he's not killing bears with his bare hands or spear diving for tuna, he's dropping gold nuggets right here. The one and only Mr. Mark Haraguchi. What's up, Mark? Well, well, thankfully I'm, I'm up because I mean the, the way you made me sound like I'm an elder, it's questionable if I'm pushing up daisies or not. So uh, thankful to be alive today, apparently. <laughs> hey man, there's no limit to age. This isn't an ageism thing, but is there a limit to how big you can make an IBC system? Is what I want to know. Conceivably, yeah. I mean, there there, there definitely are some some uh, limitation signs that are out there. However. Uh, as JD said, the you know, limits uh, are really only placed by us at times. And every now and then there's some other people, but we can have, obviously get creative and find appropriate ways to get around those limits and to make, make, actually make the system work in our favor even more. Just, right, well, just hold on. Just, just to be clear that what Mark just said is not what I said. He, he butchered it totally. That's not what I said at all. I don't, oh. want, that, I don't want that credit. All right. Clear the record then. <laughs> clear the record. Goldilocks, just, let's talk about it. So, so look, why are, the question I think is really like, why is this important, right? Yeah. Why is this important? Well, I think it's important because generally speaking, when we're talking about saving, we're, we're, most people look at savings vehicles from a perspective of having limits, right? So, so for example, um, if you make too much money, you're limited on, on being able to put money into a Roth IRA, right? Mm. Um, or uh, take a 401k, for example, you're limited on how much you can actually put into a 401k. So, so most savings vehicles in general, there are funding limits, there's, there's rules, there's regulations, there's a number of dynamics where you are limited by the vehicle you're trying to put uh, dollars or resource into. And so I think that's why this is really important to, to really discuss. What about you, Mark? Why do you think this is important? I think it's important if we view this as a foundational piece. And so if as a foundational piece, there might be some uh, roadblocks or potential hurdles for you then wouldn't it be nice to know where those are and how to actually jump over them or, or how to work within the, the confines of the systems that are out there. 
So Who you're you're say? saying you're hold on, hold on. I want to make sure I understood Mark's comment. So you're saying that this is just a practical question people are asking to just try to figure out where the guardrails are before they step into it, like making this their own. It could be. It could be. I mean, I just like just like Ernie, I I wasn't actually limited when I started, but I bumped into a limit after I started. And then I was able to move past that. And then now I'm actually limited again. So I've actually bumped into the guardrails twice. And so really the farther down this path you go, the more you're going to start to bump into this. And, and it is a common question of, of people asking, well, you know, how, how actually, how much can I put into it? And so there are some restrictions and those are some topics we're definitely going to get into. Okay. Cause I was thinking when we were, t- we were kind of preparing for this, that this is really a question more about it's based out of abundance. Whereas what you just mentioned made it seem like, People just want to know what their limits are. I think of it as people, once they fully get this, which Nelson talks about um, on page 48 in the book, how all of your income should flow through your own banking system. And, and to me, that was, it, it was unfathomable when we first started the process of, of building our own bank. But the further on in, the more you start to see how this works, the more you start to implement it it becomes a, how much could I put into this? Like, it's no longer kind of holding back out of trepidation or like pause of concern of not knowing this new vehicle or this new process. It's now, wow, what is the limit? Is there a limit? I could, I could, I could try to put, put tons of more into this. So I, I don't know. It's more about abundance in my mind. Agreed. This sounds like we're already uncovering there's a couple of different types of limits that we're talking about and just props to Mark saying, Hey, I was, I was limited, uh, but he wasn't, he wasn't the limiting factor. The thing that is challenging to me is how many different times I have been the limit. And this is oh, a challenging wow. conversation to say, I've done this. And I wonder if you, as you're listening to this saying, Hey, I'm doing the infinite banking concept. I'm practicing infinite banking but I think I've accomplished everything I need to accomplish in this. When the reality is the goal of building the banking business and this banking process is to get to a place, Joey, like you were saying, where a hundred percent of your income is going in as premium. That's a high bar. And we want to be moving closer and closer to that. Unfortunately, many times I've been the limit on how I think that's possible. So earlier, Ernie, you said that you had been limited right? You were referring to probably what insurance limits, how much insurance coverage you could get. That's right. And and what are those sort of limits? What are the things that would prevent you from getting more insurance? People are like, crap, like as long as you're willing to deal with the insurance guy, can't you just, (laughs) yes. Yes. (laughs) Tolerating. (laughs) Uh, Limit number two, your own health and ability to qualify for coverage and then getting into the things that I was limited by, which just going to thank, thank goodness. As far as I know, all of us around this table still from a health wise qualify. Um, but the, but the thing I was limited by was for my first insurance policy I started was the amount of premium I could put in relative to my income, to my earnings at that point. Because I got into this infinite banking concept, I, I said, I, now it's time to do this. I really want to do this. Went to the insurance company and said, hey, you're wanting to put in more than we'll allow you to start from an income perspective. Isn't that interesting that you were wanting to put more money into an insurance policy than the insurance companies was willing to allow you to do? That's, mm-hmm. that's backwards thinking, right? Because what many people have experienced in their life is that they bought insurance with the Walmart mentality. I want to put as little in and get as big as I can. Right. You know, I want to show up and get the big box of cereal. <laughs> you know, I want it to be cheap. Well, that's well, the way that this way we buy insurance. Well, and, and even to that point, most people buy insurance too on from, from this ideology that one, it, it won't happen to me, at least during the term that I have the policy, right? We're all going to die at some point, but nobody thinks we're going to die with insurance. And so usually a lot of the conversations that I've had historically, not since, you know, doing the IBC journey is I won't need as much, right? My wife will get remarried, which is always an interesting conversation, right? To have with someone. It's usually when the <laughs> wife is, isn't present. Uh, 
you know, cause, cause that's not really part of her plan. Um, but, but I think at the end of the day, when you look at it from that perspective, it's, we have to understand like these are insurance companies, right? They're insuring risk and, and no insurance company is going to let you insure something for more than it's conceivably worth. Right. Because then they're insuring against something different. Now they're insuring against fraud. You know what I mean? They're insuring against somebody intentionally breaking it so that they can collect and make a profit. And that's not what insurance is designed for. JD, I think that that's a good point when you say that it, you know, it challenges the, the typical way that we think about all of that. Right. And I mean, for us, this process of infinite banking isn't about insurance. It's about creating a storehouse for our cash so that we can go do more deals, right? Like, That's right. and to your point a second ago, Joey, you were talking about abundance. You feel like this is a, a scarce mindset when we get into limited thinking. When you, when you think about this in an abundant way, you say, if I'm going to do this well, I'm going to create more cash flows from the opportunities that come my way. I will need a bigger place to put money. But what we see in the, in our industry, unfortunately, from time to time, is that we see scarce mindsets applying it even into this concept, right? Like, I won't say 90-10 on the show. Like, I just will not talk about that concept, like uh, the 90-10 idea. Now, for everybody who doesn't know what that means, that's an inside joke. But the reality is, is that sometimes we get into this mindset that we think, well, what do we need to do? We need to try to get so much cash into the insurance policy that we're going to shove so much in. And the only way we can do it is by creating a really high death benefit to, to handle that extra cash on the front end. Now, doesn't that also limit then my insurance ability, right? Is that not going to be a hindrance? Isn't that something that we need to consider in our overall process to make sure that every decision we make has a consequence and let's evaluate those. And I don't think a lot of people even understand what all those potential consequences are. Right, Mark? Exactly. And I, so that, that's going to lead us into, I, I think, a couple, couple of points that we're touching on here that I want to make sure that we let everyone know we're, we're going to kind of walk through, which the, the, the three areas that would be areas worth mentioning is, you know, what are the limits that the insurance company might put on us? what are the limits of a, your own financial ecosystem, like Ernie was mentioning? Um, and then lastly, I, I think would be great to touch on Joey's, which is the, the creativity limits. You know, how can you creatively think about this? I mean, got some, some great individuals in there that, that we're working with, and everyone is going to touch on at least one of these. And so if, if you're thinking, oh, I don't even have these questions, then I would challenge you, maybe you're not asking the right questions, because these are questions that I'm confident the majority of people have. And it's through working through these that you actually get a better optic of what we're trying to do and what you're actually trying to do. And it's just going to be so much better for you in the long run. This podcast is amazing. Almost too amazing, Russ. There's too many ideas and I don't know where to get started creating passive income. Well, here's the thing, Joey. I think one of the things you need to consider in that statement is what is it costing you to not know? What is it costing you not to take action? I love the statement that says you don't have to be great to start. You just have to start to be great. If you're struggling on where to start, you have to know what type of investor you are. Know your investor DNA. And if you want to learn more about this, you can join us in our Passport Challenge at wealthwithoutwallstreet.com forward slash passport. Get started today. Uh, so, Mark, what? Tell us, like, did you, you said you ran into a limit? Was it on the insurance side, the financial side, or the creativity side? Mine was on the insurance side. So, unfortunately, um, they didn't agree with how much I valued myself as. Uh, <laughs> hey, sure, I've been there. I had been an there ego you, problem. Man. Come on. <laughs> I mean, clearly, I was worth way more than they were willing to to put their you know pen next to. Um, so I hit what was called the human life value, right? So what life insurance company is going to do, let's, let's make this super simple. Uh, if you're 40 years old, the life insurance companies are going to say, you know what, how much longer can you work till age 65? Well, take 65 minus your age. For me, that would be at that time, it'd be about 25. And each life insurance company is going to have a different multiplier. So they're just going to take that number, multiply it by your current earnings. And that's how much you would make before you would quote exit the workforce. From that, that's how they're gonna figure out 
what kind of death benefit do we think you're worth? If you make a hundred grand a year and you have 20 more years of runtime, well, they're going to say, well, that's about 2 million bucks if you were to pass away prematurely. So by the life insurance company's limits or uh, math equation, I had hit my quote maximum human life value. To JD's point, they didn't want to insure me for more money than I was conceivably going to make. And so from that perspective, I hit the limit and they said, sorry, uh, you're done until uh, either you cancel some policies, right? Reduce your covered limit or you make some more money to have a higher quote human life value. And so thankfully, uh, Joey's muted so I can keep talking over him. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, how did you move beyond that then? So moving beyond that, I was, I was able to create more income right? At that time, via my W-2, as well as my passive income. So now my income has increased. We multiply that by the factor. My insurable limit has gone up. Well, now that I have exited the W-2 workforce, subtract that lump of change off of my quote income. I'm now limited until I get some new passive income to up my income. So here's a, here's a question I have for you. So like, when you retired, right, you said they were saying, okay, how long could Mark work? Okay, we're going to make this arbitrary number of age 65. And they were doing a multiple. But then when you retired from, from flying, did that reduce your multiple or did it stay the same? It did not reduce the, the age versus retirement multiple, but it reduced my income because now we, we subtract that off of the ledger. Right. That's why creating new businesses all the time, Joey, is a win for us. Like, I, I know you get all upset, like, man, why are we creating a new LLC? And I'm like, well, because now we have a new business we can in, get insurance through, right? Like, I mean, this business, even though it's brand new, it still has value, man. Think of the opportunity. Like, think about Ray Kroc with the idea of taking the hamburger and, and franchising that thing across the world. Like that's where we are, man. With every business, it's billion dollar ideas. We just need to take this thing and sell it to the insurance company so we can get insurance on it. Right. Hey, I, I'm very grateful Russ, because my human life value has more than like grown by like a hundred times since you, you keep throwing LLCs behind us. So <laughs> yes, it does. I appreciate let's, it. Let, let's go. All right. Let's talk about, <laughs> Let's talk about point number two, financial limits, right? Like a lot of times when we think about how much money, is there a limit to how much money I can put in my infinite banking system? Most people say, yeah, it's called my wallet. <laughs> you know, they're, they're, I don't have so much cash I can put in the sink. But are there other things, JD, that relate to how much someone can put in? Uh, practically speaking, there's, there's an actual formula uh, that every insurance company essentially operates under, uh, and it's just a multiple of income, right? Cause again, they're, they're, they're insuring your life that said, look at this person at this age, making this amount of income, continue to work until age 65, right? Then, then, you know, that's, um, a reasonable amount of money. What percentage of that income could they conceivably save without, um, um, you know, potentially hurting themselves financially. And so, so there are income or, or premium limits based on a formula that every insurance carrier has uh, based on how much you can put into an insurance policy. Well, with you, Ernie, you were talking about limits too. You were talking about it. You said, well, they were limited how much death benefit I could get, which ultimately limited how much cash you could put in. But really, it also had to do with financial limits, right? Like, because you were trying to put in a even though you had the money, you were trying to put in a percentage that was greater than what they thought you should do. What is, what's those numbers? Like people want to know, like, what's the highest percentage that I can put in of my income as a premium to get this infinite banking system going? Right. Yeah. That was exactly my, my issue. It wasn't, I don't, I mean, this is a while ago. It wasn't the death benefit. It was the amount of premium I was wanting to put in relative to my income. And so the insurance company is saying, hey, we've got some guidelines. We, we, we want to make sure that we protect the consumer so that they don't get sold. I'm doing some buddy quotes here more than is financially suitable for them. And so there's a percentage and each company is a little bit different. It's safe to say somewhere between 20 and 30 percent. 
I mean, did you have a conversation system. with them and say, hey, look, I am the seller and the sellee. I'm okay I, I said, with it. Hey, I want to create my own personal banking system and I want to use your company and your product to put a lot of my money into. And they said, sorry, we got to <laughs> limit you. So I said, great, I'll take one. And now I have, I have four policies in my, in my ecosystem of banking. And so it's possible to continue adding to this, but that's what I ran into up front. So is it possible? I'm not going to say people did this, but like per se, like whenever in any sort of giveaway where someone was like, Oh, limited to one per party, you know, and you're like, Oh, okay, well, I'm going to put my kids in line, you know, four deep behind me and give them 10 (laughs) bucks, you know, like, Exactly. We're a party of one here, not a party of four, right? Like, so can you go to other other places? Can you go to other insurance companies and, and take advantage of the 20% at each one? And now you go to four, you can put in 80% of your income. Some people are just wired that way. And I might be, I might be talking with one right now. It might be the idea guy. They, you get the, you get the rules. Maybe I need to go talk to your mom, Russ. <laughs> hey, when young Russ, you had the rules of the house. How are those rules taken? I'm going to guess right up to the limit and a little bit over so long as you didn't feel that you were going to get caught. Hey, rules you know, just a suggestion to Russ, just so we're clear. <laughs> hey, you know, uh, Nelson Nash had a saying about that, right? He said, what you want to do, especially as you're designing a life insurance policy, you know, how much premium are you going to put in? You remember him talking to us about this, Joey. He'd say, you want to, you want to scoot your toes right up to the line. And then just push them so they hang over just slightly over the right. You remember him talking about that? Um, just hey, like him. Something like that. <laughs> what, what's what's your thoughts, Dad? I mean, you're being so quiet over there. I don't know why you're using the mute button so much. Well, I I'm trying to consider this. Like we talked about financial limits from like being able to put in a percentage of your income to to Ernie's point. I think there's also the the how much death benefit is pertaining to how much income you make right now and how much they think you'll be worth, quote, quote unquote, your human life value, which kind of alludes to the insurance limits. I'm thinking like, what about the person who feels like they are personally limited financially from, from putting money into a system like this? And I'll, I'll say this, like early on, Russ, you and I are meeting and I'm making good money, but I couldn't personally see where I was going to free up additional cash to fund this system. I could only see one immediate application at the time. And, and for those of you who are listening to this, and maybe you're, you're like, I'm, I'm right there with you. Like, I want to do this at a high level, but I feel constricted. Like, there's just not enough cash flow to do this at a high level. Well, I can tell you, get started with the one that you can see and that you can start with and allow it to grow. And I've I've said this on the show many times, but it's like walking down a tunnel, right? At the end of the tunnel, you can see just a little bit of light. And as you continue to walk towards it, the light starts to open up. And it's not that it wasn't, it was always there, but you could only see it based on your perspective at the time. So as you walk closer, it becomes much, much bigger and you can continue to grow this. When I first started with you, Russ, I had one policy that was $2,000 a month. Within a year, I had three policies that were $60,000 a year. Mm. Okay. And if you had told me that at the first, I didn't have that cash flow. Like it didn't make sense at first. But the more I started to see this at work and the more I started to get creative, it started to say, oh, wait a minute, why don't I apply this to this concept? Why don't I apply this cash flow over here to this concept? And, and then Russ was like, absolutely, you can do that. And do you, you remember me asking you the question after that, Russ? Probably not. Remind me. Well, I was like, I was like, dude, why didn't you tell me I could have done this? Like I had... I had this cash flow from day one. Nothing's changed. Why didn't you tell me? And what did you say? Well, you just didn't, you didn't have it. Like you were not there yet. You, you didn't know. I I wasn't ready for it. I I wasn't, I wasn't at that point in the tunnel, if you will, to see that that was all possible. So from a financial limit, 
um, sometimes it just takes getting with a coach and starting to look at your, your cash flows differently, like how you pay your mortgage, you know, how you're paying off debt, your 401k or your retirement kind of contributions. Like those things can all be, um, there's found money is what I'm trying to point out. Well, so if we go back, right, we've shared this many times. If you think about infinite banking, it really falls into three major categories. Category one is I have to identify the cash flows that's going to go in here. And that's just what you were talking about. I had You had to identify immediately where would your cash come from? Oh, I had $2,000 that was going here. I can reallocate it. You, you didn't see the other application, as you said. And then right. as time went on, then you were like, oh, well, how do we design it, right? Because basically what we're saying too is that sometimes we're going to meet a limit on the person that we're trying to insure, ourself, our spouse, our kids, our business partners. All that has to go into that design phase. And then it goes into integration, right? How are we going to use this system in order to implement the process of becoming financially free? I, I love that all of these sort of things, right, are, there are governors around it. There are protection measures. Like you said, Ernie, the, the insurance company was trying to look out for your best interest, at least to the best of their knowledge. Now, now we, we know that not, not perfect, right? They didn't know what they didn't know. But we, this, this system is built with some governors bolted on. And as we continue to grow it, we can we can make this thing go a little faster. We can make this thing do a little bit more than the average system that exists out there. I know, Mark, like you've been able to find lots of creativity through building your system over the last four or five years. Super fortunate. Creativity is actually one of those fun things. Is, as, as we mentioned on several recent podcasts, the infinite banking concept is just that. It's a mental exercise. It's an opportunity for us to think creatively and find creative solutions to everyday problems. And so one of the solutions is if we're looking at how am I gonna, how am I gonna fund this system? How am I going to then create dollars that can then continue funding it for me to build my ecosystem? Well, what if you could set up an infinite banking concept type system right? So a cash flow management system where we could dump our money in. What if we could then borrow against that, deploy that into an asset, have that asset spin off enough cash flow to not only pay for itself, but then to also pay the premium. So now all of a sudden we've created our own individual perpetual wheel. So all you really had to do was, was plant the seed, right? You had to plant the seed and then you could actually borrow against the harvest and have it come back and consistently run itself for you going forward. So those are the opportunities where in the beginning, you're right. When I started, Russ, all we looked at was, hey, what's my monthly income? What's my monthly expenses? How many dollars do I have left over at the end of the month? Okay, great. How many of those can we put in to, to, to create a premium? Because that was the extent of my understanding. Now, it's a different line of, okay, well, where can I uh, garner some dollars from put it in and then figure out where can I then redeploy the clone dollars. Um, another Star Wars reference for all you guys out there, which Yoda says, you know, you know, do or do not, there is no try. Um, but if we can send out clone dollars and make our money work twice, once with inside the system and the second time out in the real world, actually generating some even better uh, cash flow systems for us, hmm, just gets even better. Well, yesterday, Joey, you and I were able to sit sit down with Sharon Shravatsa, right? One of one of the most influential people in the business space right now. And we talked about the four paths to passive income, right? And it all started because we were able to build a system like this, that we were not limited by financial insurance or creativity. We just figured out a way to make these things happen. We were able to create opportunities through this system. And I, I think that for us, passive income has opened up even more doors, right? As people say, why do you have 20 of these whole life policies, Russ? Well, because they just haven't given me 21 yet, right? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, it's the, it, right? Like it's coming, but why do I have another one? Well, I'll get another one because there's going to be new cash flows that have to happen. And 
Uh, as you're listening to this podcast, I know this is very specific to a concept that you may or may not be familiar with. And that's why we have these discussions every week so that we can talk about a fine, a, a foundational tool that we use on our path. You listen to our passive income report, you get to hear some of the cool things we're doing, land flipping and ATM investing. Maybe it's in the short-term rental space. Maybe it's the fill in the blank for you. There's so many opportunities, but we want you to, to know that these opportunities exist. And if you, if you haven't had a chance to get on a call with one of our coaches, ask if this is a good fit, you can go to wealthwellwallstreet.com forward slash free call and Take 15 minutes and, and talk about your situation. Talk about the the limits that maybe you believe that are around you and, and see what these coaches can do to help you and understand that better. Guys, this has been a great discussion. Final final words and go around the table. I know we're going a little long today. JD, you're up. The final thoughts. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, – uh, I think the more that you understand something, the more comfortable you get with it, right? The more confidence you have. Uh, and, and through that, I think helps to build creativity, right? When I first got introduced to IBC um, as somebody that's on this side of the fence, right? That's a, that, that, that helps to set it up. Even my, you know, thinking was limited, but the more comfortable I got with it, the more I understood it, right? The more confidence I built, the more that I realized like, wow, there's so much possible here and working with other uh, coaches that, that, um, have had similar struggles or similar thoughts, but I've been able to overcome that through education and understanding and all those types of things. I think is super valuable to be able to work with somebody like that. Mm. So good. Earn. I'm with JD on that. But my thought would be when you said about the, what's the first step in, in building out the infinite banking concept is identifying cash flows. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to know how, how can I creatively create yeah. How can I have creativity expanding my system? Just look, observe, identify the things that are being marketed to you to, to pull your capital away from you. Primarily from, from banks, come finance this, come finance that, but also all these different compartments of cash that were, that were being told we need, we need a specific college savings plan. We need a specific wedding savings plan. We need specific health savings plans, things like this that are pulling capital away from you uh, for, for your future use. But if you're looking for the benefit of today, you can, you can identify some of those and, it, and that should help you even expand your thinking. That'd be something practical that I'll just leave as a, as a final thought. Stay. what's your final takeaway? I'm going to start, I'm going to end where I started and just say, Abundance, man. This is uh, this is an abundance question. Don't be afraid of abundance, right? This is this is a process. It, if you're not quite there yet, just get started, and then start to see what comes as a result. I'm I'm living proof that um, it, you, you can, can do expand. it. Anybody can exactly. I mean, come on. I'm a I'm a country boy for crying out loud. It it comes <laughs> it comes with time. Okay. <laughs> no, said nobody. <laughs> as, as, Joey would roll, uh, as Joey would roll up to our cattle business auction with his rubber duck boots. <laughs> okay, maybe not a country boy, but I I was not thinking in an abundant way to begin with, and it will and it will absolutely take over the more you you step into this space. That's my final thought. Mark, take us home, man. Depending on JD's idea, if, if, if you are bumping up against insurance limits, boy, wouldn't it be nice to partner up with somebody who has some ideas on how to solve those problems? If you're bumping up on financial limits, boy, wouldn't it be nice to partner up with someone who can help you work through some of those challenges? If you've got some creativity limits, man, wouldn't it be great to surround yourself with some people who are all thinking outside the box and who might have gone through what you've gone through and can share their, their experience. So really, if you would like a fast pass to get to the head of the line, to shortcut the time it takes to figure a lot of this stuff out on your own, mm, wouldn't that be something? I wonder where someone could get something like that, Russ. Man, if there was only a place, right? If there was only a group, a community, what if there was even a, a link 
<laughs> that could send people to that inside of that group, after clicking on that link, they could not only have access to this sort of information on a regular basis, be able to spend time with you coaches on a group level as well as a one-on-one -on -one level. Man, that would be an amazing idea. Even the idea guy would be excited about something like that, Joe. Would y'all finally get to it? Wealthwithoutwallstreet.com forward slash free call for crying out loud. Get on a call with one of these coaches and get in the inner circle. That's where we're about to head right now. Thanks, as always, for joining us, and we will see you on the next episode. This has been the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the show to break free of the Wall Street mindset and begin building wealth on your own terms in places you understand so that your wealth will never run dry. See you next episode.